Governor Abbott down in Texas said, if you're using public money to install chargers, you know, the Inflation Reduction Act is dictating, then you must include the North American charging standard plug on your chargers if you're using public money. So that's what Governor Abbott said? Yeah. So in Texas, if you're going to build it with public money, if you're going to accept public money to build your charger, then you got to have the Tesla charger as part of it. He gets to dictate that? Well, he's the governor and it's state money. So it's state guess, money. Yeah. Yeah. He, he gets to, yeah. he gets to have so a worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. He would have a say on that. Yeah. Wow. I, I think what's interesting about that is the, it seems like there's a movement towards this NACS standard now on the EV world. You know, one of the biggest, uh, the toughest uh, thing, I think a lot of EV owners that were not on the, say, Tesla supercharger network, one of the things that we're experiencing was that the reliability of charging and where they were located and the speeds and that they were up and running. Uh, that was a big um, hurdle for a lot of people to get through. And uh, now that, you know, you have Ford, GM, Rivian now, Rivian came out yesterday and announced they're going to go on the NACS standard. My guess is Hyundai Kia is probably next. Yeah. If I'm a betting man, I think they're probably going to make an announcement here soon. Uh, so what's interesting now is you have uh, a clear movement towards one standard, at least in North America, which is NACS. But you also have a lot of, uh, uh, call it legacy legacy EVs, you know, that have the CCS port, which is the, uh, it was the initial standard. It was a sort of, you know, a bunch of automakers said, we're going to use this one, but now they're ditching it in favor of NACS. So I think that the thought process in Texas is since you have both types of cars on the road, uh, instead of forcing people to buy an adapter, we're going to force the, the charge the I guess the, the charge makers, if they want to take advantage of the, of the incentives, they have to offer both types. You yeah. know, whereas before they only had to offer CCS. So to me, I think it's just a, I think NACS is obviously the winner here. And I'm, I'm curious to see if this will propagate to the rest of the world and not just the North America. I think, I think the transition is going to be relatively quick because you think about total percentage of cars on the road here, EVs in North America that are NACS standard, it's like 80% plus. So yeah. it's the transition super, should be relatively quick. Yeah, and as far as I like, we just talked about this what a week and a half ago when I was on your channel. Where I mean, they got Ford, and then right after, I think we dis uh, discussed that uh, they're probably going to go after every OEM that wants to be on the on on the network. That I mean, this is this is Tesla's play, right? I mean, they're going to have the operating system, they're going to have the way to charge the vehicles. I mean, this is this is the way that they're going forward with their company. They're going to have their hands on every piece of the EV market, one way or another. And that yeah, does lead to, that does lead to world domination. And you know, I mean, I'm uh, I'm hyperbolic like my son at times, but I mean, really, that's what it's going to boil down to, is that when it's almost like it's almost like uh, tissues. You know, when when you say tissues, people usually say Kleenex. Well, that was the brand. OK, that's not what it was. It was the brand. And so what's going to happen is Tesla is going to become the generic term for anything electric uh, because they will own, as Brandon says, every piece of that pie that that gets us there. Yeah, I'm curious. Can I pose a question to the panel? And I, I'd love to hear everyone's reaction, because, you know, I from my standpoint, I'm a you know, I, I've been very embedded in like the Tesla world and I'm trying to reach out to the rest of the auto market. So this is my education process. And I, of course, I'm super thankful for you guys to to be around so I can ask these questions. But I'm curious, has the recent developments uh, in your minds, have they changed your mind about uh, Tesla and EVs, uh, their adoption rate and how they, they're building momentum? Do you think that has changed at all, given the recent developments around Tesla 4 GM partnering, the soup, you know, the charging standard moving a certain way? Has that changed anything of, of how you think about EVs or Tesla? I'm just curious. I don't know who wants to take that for. I, I can go first. I can say just, I mean, talking to you guys in the last couple of weeks has completely changed my thoughts about EVs. Like, I mean, a month ago, I, th I, th I still thought EVs took like 45 minutes to charge. Um, and I mean, the newer Teslas are, are not the case. I actually interviewed a dealer yesterday um, that has a Plaid 
and um, he does a seven-hour road trip to go to three different uh, auctions on every Tuesday. And what he'll do is he'll uh, cut up half the trip, and when he goes and stops to eat lunch, he'll charge his Tesla um, at the, one of the charging stations and go eat lunch, and it's fully charged by the time he's done with lunch. So just uh, by the, having that information, I think this it's just a big fail on Tesla's part to maybe – they don't need to advertise, but maybe change the word to educate. And uh, in, in that way that uh, people who are, are not just really – I mean, for lack of a better word, plugged into the, to the ecosystem know what kind of objections that they can get over – uh, that they might be worried about going into an EV, and that's even something with me. And I follow the car market, and I didn't, I didn't know a lot of this stuff about the Teslas. I, I, I personally, I just think as as every every manufacturer starts to align with Tesla, it just seems to make the future for EVs that much more mainstream, um, because you know there will be the one standard. Uh, you know, and, and I always relate it back to uh, to between VHS and Betamax, um, you know, and, and for consumers, VHS became the standard for the entertainment industry. It's still Betamax. Um, but I, I, I think it just it, it, it makes it easier for it to become more mainstream when everything is at some point in time connected with Tesla. Um, they they were already established a brand and a presence, and everybody else is trying to catch up to it. Well, the best way to catch up to it is to become part of it. So, yeah, I I, I think it, I I think it it in the future it makes it easier for people who are considering EV adoption to just go ahead and do it. Yeah, and and for me, you know. I'm kind of, you know, in the same camp as you, Farzad. Um, been a, been a Tesla guy for a long time, though I, I really like to promote a lot of other, you know, EVs as well. You know, Hyundai and Kia make amazing EVs uh, with great charging and stuff. So I, I am excited for that future. But, you know, as far as this charging goes, um, it is becoming sort of synonymous because nobody's saying Ford and GM are adopting the NACS. They're all, you know, the media is like, oh, they're all using the Tesla cable. They're all using the Tesla charger. So it is starting to become the generic. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and EVgo and, and all these other charging networks themselves using the plug, they're all saying all the, they're switching to the Tesla plug, to the Tesla plug. So it is becoming more generic and, and sort of this thing out there. So you are going to get, as Brandon said, the, the Kleenex effect of, of all that stuff where it's, it just sort of becomes generic. But as, as Brandon and Ray said, what need, what's needed here isn't Tesla advertising, it's education. And I do put a lot of onus, and I've said this for a long time, put a lot of onus on Tesla for that. As, as you said, they're what, 80% of the market in the, in the U S and the EVs, but so many people are uneducated on, the questions or have all these misconceptions and you know and that's on tesla that they're not out there educating people people still have all these old things you know the the battery replacement is probably the number one i get all the time it says oh and you're in five thousand miles you're gonna have to replace that battery it's gonna cost twenty thousand dollars like no what when you know, like that's just not the case and it's on tesla to come out and and make this education happen can can I add one thing real quickly? I I think it will become important for who for whoever is running the char a charging network um, that they'll advertise that it accepts the Tesla plug, not the NACS. Okay, it, it it's so much easier to understand. Oh well, does this does this use the Tesla plug? That's what people want to know. They, they don't want to know, is it NACS? They just, they're going to want to know, is it the Tesla plug? You know, because if it's the Tesla plug, I already have that. Um, yeah. And that's why I think it becomes the generic term for all of this. It, it, they become the Kleenex of, of uh, tissues. It, it's, 
it is what it is. I mean, they have they they might not have spent any real money on advertising, and they might not have spent any real money on education or educating the public out there, but they have over the course of time developed a name and a standard that has that is now synonymous with everything that has to do with electric vehicles. So I have a question going back to the advertising thing. This is probably one for Farzad, but if they did ramp up their advertising and get a get a massive bump of of orders in, can they actually service their their orders? Are they intentionally not advertising because they can't keep up with the potential demand that it might cause? That's a great question. So that that's um the, the advertising question and, and trying to create more awareness will bring a variable that is there's already so much demand for Teslas without advertising. So their right. their total capacity right now is about 440 to 450,000 EVs per quarter. So they're almost at 2 million yearly uh, with, with barely any advertising globally. They do, they do advertising in China. I think they do a little bit in Europe, but they don't do any in, the, in North America. So uh, if you start creating awareness that says, hey, so you know the charging thing, yeah, it's not as bad as you think. It's actually very convenient. The battery thing, you know, you don't have to replace it. Eight eight year unlimited mile warranty. I was in the service supply chain. The big crates that had the high voltage batteries, they barely if ever moved. So I have data that says these things ain't really getting repaired barely if ever uh that's just the data set that i have from working there uh, and then you just go down the list of of dispelling those myths and oh and by the way the cost you know you can buy a tesla for uh a model three after incentives in the u.s i think is somewhere around thirty three thousand dollars now uh and then you don't pay for gas you pay for electricity which is about a half to a fourth of the cost so you start going down the list and then people are like holy crap okay so i can i can actually afford a tesla and i've been thinking about doing one so it will create a an issue for Tesla for sure. So I think I think their their strategy will probably be get the facilities ramped up a little bit more, try to bring uh, bring in more capacity ahead of time because they ha they did say that they are going to start advertising. Elon Musk at the shareholder meeting said uh, after me Kevin asked him that question, right? Who's a who's a finance YouTuber? He's like, yeah, we will advertise. So they will have to put in capacity. Otherwise, they're going to run into the issue they had during COVID, which is they they had six month plus waits and they had to make the prices ridiculously high so people would stop ordering them because they had a six to nine month backlog. So and I think the company, it, you know, every EV maker should be trying to move away from having the customer wait to get their EVs because this is the perfect time to have them available as momentum grows. Like you don't want people to wait to get their EVs. You want people to just be able to go to a dealer or go to the Tesla store, place their order, and then maximum one to two weeks later, you can go pick it up, right? So it's a phenomenal question and um, it will be a problem for them to execute properly. Otherwise people will have to wait to get their cars. And I think the Cybertruck especially is gonna be a perfect case uh, for that dynamic once it launches next quarter because that thing has got 1.5 million reservations and they even haven't they haven't even started the damn thing so it's going to be fascinating to watch